The views expressed on the following program are not necessarily those of WPSL, but uh, we're the ones who've encouraged you all along to like and share these shows on your favorite social media and with all your friends and neighbors because if it's happening on the Treasure Coast, you'll probably hear about it on the Sue Alexander Show, that's for sure. In fact, here she is right now, the host of today's show, the one and only Sue Ellen Sanders. Thank you, and uh, thanks for joining me today. And um, we are still broadcasting uh, Zoom, but um, we're happy to be on the radio every weekend, bringing to you the events and the nonprofit organizations and associations on the Treasure Coast. And um, this isn't the first time that Caitlin Steele has been on my show, but it is the first time that she's been on my show representing the Women's Council of Realtors. So welcome, Caitlin. Thank you for joining us. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, tell us a little bit about the Women's Council of Realtors. It is actually a... Uh, professional organization that is a nonprofit organization for obviously as the title title uh, states for women realtors but what kind of things do you do we do a lot for our community we are you know of course a network of successful realtors um, we are, you know, a network of women business leaders in the industry and communities we love to give back to our community um, we put on educational events and we also do fundraisers, which is what we're going to be discussing today. Um, but we just like to educate our members. That's important to us. Um, a big thing we like to do is uh, just, um, we just like, you know, connect, connecting others. We do a lot of networking of course, and then we have state convention or conferences as well. So we connect our members to our realtor members to other realtors across the state. So that's a benefit of being a member as well. Um, so there's so many different, you know, reasons to be a member of our, well, you know, um, of our, the Women's Council of Realtors, just because of referral base, we give back to our community. We put on educational events and we fundraise. We have a lot of fun. So there's just a variety of different things. In addition, though, to um, educating your members, you also educate the public on things that you as a group uh, know that they need to hear about. And, and a lot of that may, might be related to the market. And the market has been um, an exciting one in the last few years. Um, I, I think that that the education and the networking of the realtors, especially women realtors, is really important because things have been changing so much. And there are a lot of people who move over into real estate from other um, types of, of jobs and occupations. And I know you're one of them. Yes, I am. Yes. Leaving teaching after eight years, it definitely going into real estate was a, definitely a game changer for me. As you know, you know, my journey, it's a uh, definitely, it's been a <laughs> life-changing one, a leadership journey. It's definitely joining the Women's Council of Real Realtors has helped me in my leadership journey. And, you know, as I'm, I'm going to be president next year, it's taught me how to talk in front of, I taught, uh, talked and spoke in front of 200 people at a conference last in Orlando in, you know, January, I would never have the opportunity anywhere else. So it's really taught me how, to, especially to, you know, talking in front of big crowds. That's been mm -hmm. huge for me. Um, and just encouraging others to, you know, use your voice. <laughs> well, one so. of, I think the the best things about people who have had other occupations before they started in real estate is they carry with them the talents that they've developed in those other jobs. And one of the talents that you've, of course, developed is your organizational skills and, you know, even though you hadn't spoken to 200 adults, you had you dealt with third graders and fourth graders every year. So you know how to deal with all types of people. 
Absolutely. Yes. And, you know, just uh, that organizational skills, as you said, and just that, you know, encouraging that positive mindset. I think that positivity has really led me in a great way in real estate. Um, just education, like, or educating, instead of educating small minds, I'm educating adults, you know, in the real estate world. So I just, I love teaching. <laughs> so I'm hoping yes. to, I, I got my broker's license in January. So I'm hoping to get my instructor's license so I can teach real estate. So that's a gold mine. And, and that would kind of be a combination of all of your skills, which is really cool. Absolutely. Um, so <laughs> before we, we move forward if somebody is listening to this show you know we have you know 50 odd minutes so we have a lot of time that we'll be able to talk about the uh, organization itself and the events but if you are listening to this show and you're thinking that you know real estate is something you might be interested tell us a little bit about your journey um you when did you first realize that you were interested in uh real estate okay um so i was born and raised in st lucie county and while i was teaching um i had my mom actually my parents purchased some rental properties and the realtor that they were purchasing from had reached out to me and he's actually told me he's like you should get your real estate license you would be good at this and I was like, I don't have time for this. There's no way I could, you know, manage this in teaching. You know, I, I love teaching. There's no way. Um, and then when I finally did, you know, I got my real estate license, I said, you know what? This is something that I could see myself actually doing. And as I started, you know, getting into and closing transactions, I just fell in love. It's something different every day. Um, just something, you know, new, helping, I'm still helping people finding their forever home or selling, moving to the next chapter in their lives. That's, that's just what I enjoy. And then October, 2020, I was given the opportunity to leave my full-time job as a, a teaching and go into real estate full-time. And I decided to take the leap. And although I miss teaching, it has been the best decision for me you know, since to spend more time with my daughter and financially, but again, I do miss, you know, I miss the kids. I miss teaching, but I, I love real estate. <laughs> what are the skills would you say that would be important to carry with you if you are interested in, in getting involved in real estate? What are, what are the, do you think the top skills that, that somebody would need to have? I would say Pete, uh, hmm. I would say networking, communication, definitely getting out there in the community, um, just being involved, being involved in the community, um, negotiating. That's important. I just, I would say all on top of everything, communication, answering your phone, mm -hmm. being on top of everything. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes on. I mean, just being available as well. So those, those, that's what I would say. I, I love the fact that you talked about the importance to you um, about helping someone find their forever home because your goal is to help the the home potential homeowner um, not necessarily to sell a house but to you know be a matchmaker between mm -hmm. the potential homeowner and and finding the perfect house and um I, I think that there there are a lot of people who don't understand that when they're dealing with a, a real estate professional that that is supposed to be your the the professional's goal and if it's not then you should find a realtor who is like that that wants to see you in the best situation with a good fit and of course taking a potential buyer to buy a house is only half the equation. You're also helping people sell houses. And um, in order to do that, you have to have those, those interpersonal communication skills as well. Um, so it's good that the Women's Council of Realtors does offer um, the, the type of education that, you know, you can bring in, you bring in people from the community, um, for example, you know, uh, 
people like your, uh, I know uh, Michelle yeah. Franklin mm -hmm. has come and spoken to you before. What are other types of speakers who come to your organization? Yeah, we have the community update with um, Mayor Linda, Linda Hudson, uh, Michelle Franklin, and uh, Shannon Martin from Port St. Lucie. We also had last year, we had a, the firefighters, the St. Lucie County firefighters. We had a safety day to talk about that. Um, we also, so in September, we have a business plan. So that's more real estate focused, but I mean, it could be better for any business, like just a business plan meeting. So we'd like to help our realtors with that as well. Um, but yes, we do every summer, we do have a community update and we plan on having that next week, next year as well. It's my favorite event because <laughs> I love bringing our community leaders in and, you know, just getting an update about what's going on in our community. And um, as far as um, the education that uh, realtors need to know, um, what do they call the credits that real because you once you have your real estate license, education doesn't stop there. You have to continue to earn some continuing education uh, classes. Do, does the Women's Council on Realtors help with that as well? Unfortunately, um, we don't really provide those. That's more of the realtor board. We okay. do do a PMN designation course, but that's more of the state level. Um, yeah, ours are more just local education. Mm -hmm. But yes, we uh, for a realtor, it's 14 continuing education credits every two years. Wow. So you, you need to stay up to date. Do you, yes. do you have members that are also like um, uh, uh, Alley, Alley Alliance members like that, that are allied with the real estate business or all of your members of the Women's Council of Realtors, straight up realtors? So we have strategic partners. So those are our, we have um, insurance, we have title companies, um, try to think of other ones, inspectors. So we do have people like that um, who really, that's, that's what keeps our network going. That's mm -hmm. who we rely on to help us fund the year. And so we can put on these amazing events. Um, so those are our go-to people. Uh, we, they have, you know, speaking opportunities and everything else. Um, is that, is that what you're talking about? Like, yeah, that's okay. exactly what I was talking okay. about. No, so they have then... opportunities too. Um, it's, and you know, you're talking about, um, doing things as an organization and getting together. Um, but beyond education, you know, you also have that social aspect of the Women's Council of Realtors, and you also try to give back to the community. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yes. So every year we had, we choose a nonprofit to give back to this year is Pace Center for Girls. And we do a 50-50 at every event, every fundraiser, and then 50% of those proceeds go back to the nonprofit. So at the end of the year, all that the 50-50 goes back, we get write a check to that nonprofit and present it in December at the installation. Um, but we also did in March, we did a get back day. We did at Graceway Village. We went, went and volunteered for a day, um, just helped sort through the clothes. And it was, we got to see the venue and it was just a, you know, we actually, one of our board members continues to volunteer there weekly now. And we also did a beach cleanup day. So me and the president, Renee Smith, are heavily involved in giving back to the community and just... We just, we want to do anything we can to help our community. And it's good for the realtors too mm -hmm. to be visible in the community in, in that way. I know Renee Smith will be joining us shortly. Um, she's uh, was, was running a little bit late on joining the show and she is the current president. As president-elect, um, you know, you you represent the Women's Council of Realtors too, but you also, um, how do you balance the number of different sort of civic organizations that are in your life? Because there's, <laughs> a lot, there's a lot of balls in the air there. Yes, I'm a, you know, membership in Fort Pierce Women's Club, the president-elect of, you know, the Women's Council of Realtors, um, and you know, my, my kid, <laughs> four-year-old too, there's a, definitely a lot going on, but my heart's in it. Like I, I want to, I love it. I enjoy it. I love real estate. Um, so I think I, if I'm passionate about it, 
I just, I can't say no. <laughs> um, I make it work. And then I just started a real estate team in January. So that's been a really helpful as well. I have a great team behind me and, you know, it's been really successful. Does uh, being part of a real estate team mean that everybody is in real estate or do you combine with people who have different talents? I mean, yeah, most of my team, yes, is on real estate. They're all realtors. But I mean, of course, I have my team of inspectors and title companies. So I do have a solid team of that, too. But yes. <laughs> so you have regular people that you use that are, you know, part of your mm -hmm. additional uh circle so to speak yes um, and it's very it's very important to me too as a women's council of realtors president like to use my strategic partners so i use all my title companies my inspection companies everyone who's a strategic partner that's who i use in my business because they support me so i want to support them and um the the balance of you know let's, let's talk for just a minute about you being a role model for other uh, young men and women, um, especially your daughter. You, you mentioned you have a four-year-old daughter and, you know, she sees mom get, uh, go in to a meeting or, or going to an appointment and she knows that you have like a mission or you take her with you when you volunteer at an event and she sees that, you know, that life is not just taking care of yourself, it's also taking care of other people. And I think that's important. Um, for, for people who are just coming out of school uh, that are hitting the market, do you recommend real estate? I mean, I know that there are a lot of young people. I know, you know, my daughter is uh, just a few years younger than you. And a lot of the, the kids she graduated high school with um, uh, are coming out of college and going straight into real estate uh, because they think it's a good time to be in real estate. Do you think that this is that there's going to come a time where there are too many realtors? That is very interesting. I mean, I think, you know, realtors are already overpopulated, but I just, you know, you just have to have the right education. You have, you can't give up. That's the thing, you know, people give in too, too easily. They think it's easy. It's not. You have it takes you know, it takes a while to build up your reputation and get get leads and people to trust you in your business. They need to trust you and know what you're doing. Um, that's very interesting though that people are doing that. I've not heard that. So hmm, okay. <laughs> uh and, and and you, you know, you you had pretty much had the idea that you were gonna be a teacher all the way through college. Um, and you became a teacher, but, you know, like you said, moving forward, you, you look at the possibility of teaching other realtors of teaching real estate. So you could combine your love of, of educating other people. Is that something mm -hmm. you ever thought about when you were in school? Not as a teacher. No, no I never no, thought, you know, years. no, yeah. not, I could never see myself teaching adults, <laughs> but yeah. now, I mean, it definitely, I would, you know, be interested in doing it. <laughs> that's so cool. So you have um, a special event that's coming up that is a fundraiser for the community. And so we want to take some time to talk about that. Um, Cliff, if you want to check and see if uh, Renee is, uh, has joined us and is waiting. Nope, she's not there yet. Okay, we'll continue on. Um, so what's the event that's coming up? So we have a fashion show. That... <laughs> I love fashion <laughs> <laughs> So we had one last year as a Mommy Me fashion show. is very successful. But this year we decided to change it up a little bit. It is a working nine to five fashion show. Mm -hmm. It is um, a dinner and cash bar. We'll also have a silent auction and a 50-50, and of course, drawings as well. It is going to be August 26th from 4.30 to 7 at the Saints Golf Club. That's in Port St. Lucie. It is $45 per member. Non-members are $55. Our, we're going to have an MC. Her name is Anna Valenza Tillery. She is absolutely amazing. 
<laughs> oh yes, I met her. She's uh, yes. you never know what she's gonna say. She's no, very she's so she's so amazing. <laughs> She'll be doing my installation in December as well. Um, but she is great. And so yeah, I just I'm like, I'm very excited for this. We're gonna actually have a photo booth that we just got a, a sponsor for. And I think I, yeah, so I'm excited about that. So how, so mommy and me, obviously, you know, the fashions were all matching mommy and me type fashions last year. Yes. Yes, they were. Um, so I, I mean, these are going to be more business attire, you know, just like workplace clothes, but I'm, yeah, I'm excited to see, I'm not, I haven't really been a part of this committee but I'm really excited to see how like the clothes turn out and where they come from. Cause last year I was in the fashion show with my daughter. <laughs> so this year I'll just be more, you know, I'll be watching it. We're back. We, we get cut off. Oh. Um, so we're, we're back. Let's we'll pretend okay. it was a personal break. So working nine to five is is uh, could mean a lot of different things, a lot of different types of fashions, but stuff that's appropriate for work. What kind of clothing are you talking about? Um, that's a good question. So I, like I said, I wasn't a part of it this year. I haven't really been part of the planning this year. I was in it last year, but with my daughter because it was mommy and me, but I haven't really been a part of it this year. I'm assuming like slacks and a, you know nice blouses and sh and dresses, but you never know. <laughs> yeah. Do you know any of the people that are going to be showing their fashions yet? Um, I do not. Mm -mm. Okay. Well, um. So so um. Also, you know, as I said in, in the pre in the post pandemic world, um, working nine to five might also mean sitting in front of your computer at home too. So I kind of see the working nine to five fashion Ooh. taking on a little bit of a more of a comfort clothing vibe, still nice and neat, especially the top half. Um, but yeah, but um but it'll be interesting to to talk about uh, and to see as part of the show things that are appropriate. Um, one thing that you know, especially with uh, Caitlin, you're you're a millennial, and <laughs> Generation X, I think, is is worse about this than the min min millennials, <laughs> but um, the dressing casually or dressing that's not appropriate for work. Um, you know, a lot of times you see people coming into a business situation wearing flip-flops or, you know, mm -hmm. wearing their hair at, at a certain way that it might not be appropriate. So what would you say, like, when you, for example, when you get dressed up for an appointment, is there a standard level of dress that you wear? Absolutely. Yes. I, you know, I wear a nice dress and heels and I do my hair, makeup and everything else. Absolutely. Um, just because you're dealing with the public. So yeah. Uh, teaching, I was a little bit more relaxed, but now that I'm out and, you know, representing adults <laughs> it's a little bit different than being in front of 20 kids all day <laughs> yeah no I can imagine I can imagine that's true um so this sounds like it's going to be a fun event though and also it's going to be an evening event so it's something that oh I see Renee is joining us <laughs> hi Renee you know, Hi. Know, this is Are you there? Oh, yeah. So it's hard to compete with that, okay. right? I guess we have your own name, Renee. Renee. Oh, Renee. I'm coming. Oops. Okay. You're on the air. <laughs> Sorry. Hold on.
Uh, we're, we're taping Women's Council of Realtors and um, what the organization does and a little bit about the fundraiser. And I apologize. Back. I had a, I was in a meeting. <laughs> oh, no, we're happy you're there. Yeah. So um, we, we just got to started talking about the fundraiser and she said it was working nine to five uh, was the theme. So what type of fashions um, are you expecting with that type of theme? We are looking to have business attire, fashion, and also kind of after hours. You know, sometimes you work nine to five and then you might have an after hour party. So it'll probably be a little cocktail. And mm -hmm. then we're going to have some inter, how did Kelly say it, inter uh, clothes that you could kind of change over and Switch the over day to night day stuff. To night. Yes. yes. <laughs> I saw a funny meme. I saw a funny meme the other day um, that on on Instagram was talking about um, that somebody said once they started working, they expected to have more opportunities to wear clothes that went from day to night, uh, and they didn't. Um, but that's always something that you you want to know especially uh as a younger professional where you might go out afterwards where you um you know you might take a a regular work day and then your meeting becomes a, a dinner meeting throw on a scarf or a little jacket in order to take it to um, the, the next step. Um, let you miss my asking Ken about her, her um, becoming a realtor and how she had decided to become a realtor and, and the talent she thought that one needed to, to go into real estate. Have you always been in the real estate? Um, I've um, been in real estate for 18 years now and wow, I started yeah. I started down in West Palm Beach and I moved up to St. Lucie County in 2013 so I, I actually like doing business in <laughs> St. Lucie County versus old crazy Palm Beach Palm Beach is just so big <laughs> yes yeah, all it over is. the cliff <laughs> I, I I moved from West Palm to uh, St. Lucie County uh, 32 years ago um, and spent about 10 years in West Palm Beach. And you're right, even 30 years ago, West Palm Beach was a little on the crazy side. And it was so big that when you went places, you didn't necessarily recognize everybody. You could go to an event in Palm Beach County and not know everybody in the room. And I really love that about the Treasure Coast and partic particularly about St. Lucie County. Yes. <laughs> that um, it's uh, an opportunity to run into people, your family, wherever you are. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Very convenient. Um, I have you breaking up. Yeah. Oh. So what are the talents that you would say somebody needs to have in order to go into real estate? Um, have the patience to talk to people and communicate. And and that's kind of what what Kellen said. The patience yes. and see, <laughs> I wouldn't have identified patience as one of the most important characteristics. But you oh know. yes, you, <laughs> you meet all kinds of people with all different kind of personalities and backgrounds and. It's working with those people and to have patience sometimes. I think you really need the patience and you really want to be the type of person that's that's a people. You don't necessarily have to be a people person, but just be able to communicate well. Yeah. 
I with, agree. With, with your people. And with your people, you're talking about the people that you're helping there for, for home or actually for home. Uh, it, it could be for the next 10 years or until they find something else that they they want. Um, how has the market in the last few years changed the way you do business? Want to take that, Kate, Caitlin, first? Or? <laughs> Go ahead. It says, so you've been in the business longer, so I'm interested to see what you well, have to I say. I can tell you, um, <laughs> it has really changed. Uh, everything changed, actually, after COVID. Um, before COVID, you know, we were all over. The business was, I should say, the market was was very good. I mean, you know, we were selling houses. And then when COVID came, the market actually got a lot better for a lot of us because most people were staying home. But us as realtors, we were able to to go out and still help people buy and sell properties. And then right after we got back out, you see the market had changed. We didn't, hope, thank goodness, we didn't really go into a recession, but the interest rates have changed. And because those interest rates have changed, it kind of slowed the market. Some buyers got a little hesitant to buy because the prices went up and then the interest rate went up. So it, it slowed a little, but we are still very steady and and people are a lot more hesitant. So you really want to keep them educated right now. That would be, I would say, would be the difference. I agree with you, Renee. <laughs> I haven't been in as long as you. So, but, you know, I do see it's challenging now than it was when I first got into it in 2020 or 2019. So when, when you say you want to keep them educated, you yes, to the trends and neighborhoods or um, the surrounding schools or is it um, everything? Well, a little bit of everything, but mainly we want, I want to keep them educated on the process of buying as a whole. Um, there's a lot of things folks don't understand when they get into buying. I mean, for instance, yesterday I was on the phone with a lender and, you know, she has a buyer and the buyer instantly was like, oh, I'm going to start paying off my bills instead doing things. And we were like, no, 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 don't do anything until you talk to your lender first. So mm -hmm. there's a process and a lot of folks don't really understand the process. And so that's where we educate them on the actual process of buying the things that you should do and the things that you shouldn't do. And if you're not really ready, then we educate them on, on what they need to do to, to get ready to buy that house. They might not be ready now, but they might be ready three to six months. And we just educate them on things that they need to do to be ready in those three to six months. Tell them what to do. Like, don't spend credit. Don't open anything new and slowly pay your bills on time. And just the little things that they would think that they would know. But a lot of folks don't really understand the process. And we educate them on that process. And it, and it makes it easier for them because once they understand, then it, it it makes the whole transaction a lot smoother. So I like to educate my buyers and my sellers up front to let them know what what obstacles might come along and, and keep them educated and keep that open flow of communications at all times. With the um, uh, interest rate, rates, do you see more loan finance and uh opportunities for buying more people who are, are, are looking to those transactions. You were, you were breaking up a little, so I'm not sure if I got I the know. full question. <laughs> Something okay. about interest rates. With the interest rates that are rising um, or the, that have risen, um, do you see more cash buyers or more owner financing? And do you handle that any differently? Well, I understand that there were a lot, I had a hard time, harder time finding listings because yes. a lot of sellers 
weren't aren't looking to sell right now mm -hmm. because they locked in at that three percent interest rates. And when interest rates went higher, a lot of them were not refinancing and not looking to sell because they didn't have any place to go and they didn't want to have to put out more money to to move to pay a higher interest rate. So yeah, some folks the same are not thing. even refinancing because of that. And they mm -hmm. decided to just keep their home and stay at home. Have you, do you see then a lot of more, more people that are moving from out of town? I, you know what, believe it or not, we're still getting a lot of people coming from the South, <laughs> the Miami and the Broward oh, area, because it's still, yeah. the cost of living is still a lot cheaper up here. So they're mm -hmm. coming up here to buy, but they're still working South, but they're coming up here to buy. And we're getting a lot, I mean, a lot of, I know we're getting folks from up North, uh, mm -hmm. like New York and stuff coming down. And, and those sometimes would be our cash buyers. And then we also have a lot of sellers who are moving out of state. That's what I'm noticing mm -hmm. as well. I've had a lot of sellers move to Georgia, North Carolina. So <laughs> moving out um, of state. And Yes. And, and, you know, that's the thing is exactly what Renee was saying, that if you had low interest and you decide to sell, the only way you can afford to buy another house is moving to state. Mm -hmm. Um so you probably see a lot of interstate interstate travel uh, through that. The other thing that's really interesting about how real estate has changed over the years, and uh, you know, Renee, I love that you have all those years of experience that that you can count on. But I remember back when when you were buying a house, you had to literally sit in a real estate agent's office and flip through an MLS book. book. Yep, the book. I Now, when I started, the book wasn't there, but I heard about the book. Yeah. So, <laughs> but um, and I can tell you when I started, I didn't have um, Google on my phone. I didn't have a <laughs> GPS. So we had to uh, print out those Google Maps mm -hmm. and have the hand, the hard paper copy to do, you know, my directions and my map which is now yeah. I have my GPS. <laughs> yeah, now it, it's certainly tools that have made your life more oh, uh, yeah. e easy <laughs> to, to deal with and, and uh, being able to find out what people want and being able to sort, you know, through MLS or through, you know, the, there's the Zillow and uh, realestate.com and all the other places that people might reach out to you through another source that you had no idea. So how do you coordinate that? How do you learn to deal with that? I mean, there's a lot of things real estate professionals need to do that they didn't have to do years ago. Um, my brokers help do that because they get, a, they purchase different um, lead generation, short software, and that kind of helps us where I don't really have to worry about that because um, they give us, I have a very good CRM that I use through my brokerage and it kind of helps with me not, in, not, I don't really worry about people that go to realtor.com and Zillow because they end up still needing us as a realtor and right. again, we, we educate them and we, we update them on on what Zillow tells you, and then we give them the real life information. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it is. So um, what, how are, if somebody is already a member of the uh, St. Lucie County, the, the real estate organization for St. Lucie County, why should they also be a member of the Women's Council of Realtors? Well, Real Women's Council of Realtors works very closely with our local realtor board. And we are an arm of, of the realtors. But what we do is we help with leadership. We help with networking. We help with uh, referrals. And we help with education. That's our four pillars that we stand on. And a lot of the leaders that are in our local board have come through Women's Council. Um, a lot of our leaders in our community have come through Women's Council. And Women's Council is just an organization. We work hand in hand with the regular, our local realtor board 
but we're we're I would say we're that arm that helps those mostly women. We do have ten percent of men, but we help women in the communities that we work in the industries that they work for us to help grow in the community. And and that's what we do in Women's Council. And we do that, like I said, through our four pillars, which is leadership, education, networking, and referrals. So we give referrals throughout the country. We do networking throughout, because um, we're, we're Broward, Palm Beach, St. Lucie Realtors. So we network within all of those counties, including Martin County. And uh, we, the education that we bring is outside the box. So we do have education classes through our local realtor board and real women's council. We do education classes. That's a little outside the box of what the realtors do. So we still work together in the collaboration. So it, it kind of works very well, the women's mm -hmm. council with our local realtor board, but it, it's a, it's a small entity and we build leaders. So before uh, you joined us, Caitlin and I were talking about some of the different uh, nonprofit organizations. Uh, she mentioned uh, last year the actor uh, uh, that we gave year. back to. Yes. Yes. Uh, but this is Pace, um, Pace Center for Girls mm -hmm. and uh, so during the uh, and actually and, sorry to interrupt actually Renee uh, chose that uh, nonprofit for the year so Renee maybe if you want to explain why you chose it sure okay. yeah, yeah great. I, um, when I first moved up to St. Lucie County I had found out about the Pace Center for Girls and I'm a mother of three girls myself. And, you know, we're, women and girls, they go through a lot. And I found out that PACE helped girls that could not make it through the regular public schools. They helped the girls that have been juvenile delinquent. They help girls that are homeless. They help girls that are having issues with family or just personal lives. And they help these girls get back on their feet to go back to mm -hmm. into the public arena, to public schools. And I just love what they did for the community and to help these young girls get on their feet and bring them encouragement and motivation and support to let them know that they are worth something. And I, it just, it was just to my heart, like I said, because I have girls myself and I always, when I volunteered, I always volunteered with them. And anytime I volunteered with the realtor board and they wanted to always do something, I would always say, let's do something for Pace. And no one would ever want to do anything for Pace. So when I, it was my turn and my opportunity um, with the Women's Council and I had to pick my nonprofit, it was no doubt in my mind that I was going to support the Pace Center. And I was happy to do that. So well, I'm, that, that's I'm glad. why I I'm glad you did too. Um, I uh, was a board member of PACE over the last uh, three years. And so I've seen firsthand of um, the changes. And, you know, as you said, one of PACE's goals is to get these kids on the right track, both academically yes. and through counseling so it's a combination of both mm -hmm. of those things to get them back to uh their their school and sometimes it's just a blip uh in their family where someone's been sick or there was uh a, an issue or they just needed to step away and rather mm -hmm. than drop out of school um have this opportunity to go to a, a regular program is also going to offer them the ability to counsel at the same time. Uh, so just a tremendous um, and I, I have heard success stories from these girls because you talked about the importance of, of leadership and education and um, 
if you've ever toured uh, our local Pace Center for Girls, and you see that these girls speak for themselves, they don't, yeah. they don't allow somebody else to tell their story. And that's taken a lot for them to be able to do that. So I'm really proud of them. I'm so delighted. Um, I, I too, uh, made them the, the benefactor of our special event last year, the Selfish Beer Mile. Uh, they received the funds from that. And because they're a smaller organization and they might be forgotten on the list when you're naming all the things that are familiar to everybody, um, mm -hmm. the the money that we you raise for them goes so much farther. You know, they have they have their partners and they're able to get so much to and it goes straight to the girls. Um, last last summer, I sponsored a pizza party for them um, and they got to make their own pizza. So it wasn't just they sat there and they, they got to learn how to make the pizzas. So um, the leadership of Pace is really, really taking it in a great direction. And I'm, I'm excited that, that you've chosen them as your charity. So let's get back to the event that is coming up at the end of August because tickets are on sale now. And I know they're on sale. You said, Caitlin, $45 for members, $55 for non-members. Yes, that's correct. How do people get tickets? So they can go to our Facebook page. We I did make an event um, and then go to the tickets link um, or they could go to... Uh, our bit.ly WCR 2023 fashion. Oh, so probably just the, the Facebook page. Facebook might be easier. Story. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and, uh, they could, the tickets are for sale now. Can they also buy tickets from a local member or find out more information from a member of a, the Absolutely. They can contact me or Renee Smith um, for more information if they need to, or we can direct them to other members. But yeah, they, absolutely. And the date for the event again, Renee? August 26th. It's a Saturday mm -hmm. from 4 to 7.30. Are, are men and women invited? Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. yes. So it's a, a co-ed event. Now, I'm yes. sure you have some partners and some sponsors that you might yes. like to mention. And I wanted to give you the opportunity to do that now, if you'd like. I would love to do that because we have just received uh, most of our sponsorship packages are bought. And Brightway uh, Insurance, the Moody Group, is our food sponsor. Next Home Treasure Coast is our drink sponsor. And we have the um, property appraiser from St. Lucie County is our DJ sponsor. And, ah. <laughs> and we are working on a photo sponsor right now. I thought I had one, but we might be needing a photo sponsor. So if anyone is listening to this right now and would like to sponsor our photographer, that sponsorship is $250 and it will include um, a ticket uh, into the fashion show. That's great. And I'm so um, happy to hear that our property appraiser's office, Michelle Franklin's office, is also a sponsor. They are so great at giving back to the community with through their organization. Yes. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. So people can go to your, your social pages. You have mm -hmm. a Facebook is it Women's Council of Realtors of St. Lucie County? Or yes. Okay. Yes. That is and, correct. And and so you can go there. Do you also have a website that people can go and check out if they want to find out more? WCR.org. Okay. That's pretty easy. WCRCouncilofrealtors.org. <laughs> and then you can also get all the information on other special events that are coming up. Um, yes. 
um, reach out to you personally, Renee, through that that website too, if they want to find out more information. If they go, if they go yes. to the Saint Lucie Network, because it's the main um, website for the whole uh, Florida. For okay, and you could also get some uh, national, but it's our main website. So if they wanted to find us, when you go and they ask you to name your network, put in Saint Lucie County, and you will find us. Yes. And, and yep. we'll pull it to St. Lucie County. Yes. And we're also going to have a casino night in November. That'll be really exciting. So I'm really excited about that. I want to throw that out there. So do you have a oh, date yes. set for that yet? Do we have a we're date? Work, we're, we're, well, actually, we're working on a date because we, we had November 9th, but I realized it was a conflict. So we're we're looking for another date, but it is going to be in November. And it's so going to be the first, the first, the beginning of November. Yeah, so sometime early in November. Yes. Um, so, but the best way to find that out is by uh, checking social out media. Her, yeah, social media, like and follow the St. Lucie Women's Council of Realtors on, on social media and check out the events. So again, the fashion show is um, the Women's Council of Realtors a nine to five fashion show and it is August. Did you say 26? Yes. yes. 26. 26. Um, and uh, the tickets are $45 for members of the women's council of realtors um, and $55 for non-members. So very affordable. And uh, Caitlin, did you say there's going to be um, dinner included with that ticket or? Yes. Yes. Yeah, dinner, <laughs> dinner, and it's going to be a cash bar. Mm -hmm. And it okay. is going to be at the Saints Golf Club at 2601 Southeast Morningside Boulevard. Okay, awesome. That's That sounds great. It sounds like a fun event and um, you'll be able to have money that you raise from that event and everything else that you're doing this year also going to pay center for girls. When so, we do our 50-50 and our uh, prizes and, and drawings, that money does go to the pay center. That's awesome. That's awesome. And I know that they're really excited about that as well. So uh, Caitlin Steele and Renee Smith have been my guests. They are local real estate professionals, uh, licensed realtors uh, in St. Lucie County. And Renee is president of the Women's Council of Realtors. And Caitlin is president-elect. Thank you both for joining me today. It's been a pleasure. And thank, thank you. you. Yes, thank you for having us. Thank you for listening to the Sue Ellen Sanders Show. We're here every weekend with more information. Have a great week. You the too. Sanders thank you, Hill. Weekend mornings, 7.05 a.m. Saturdays and Sundays on WPSL with archives on YouTube under WPSLTV.com. This is WPSL Port St. Lucie, the talk of the Take Treasure Coast picture. and webcasters of the world on Google Home. Alexa, Hamilton and Apple on your smart.